Welcome to Forever XL, the Path of XL podcast. I'm Justin, AK Tags. Tyler Recker of Days. Episode 143 of this here podcast we got on. That's it, huh? That's it. That's a lot. 143? We, I think we should do two oh, episodes a week. Oh, uh, well, we do. <laughs> we do. Speaking of, big shout out to our patrons, uh, Bomp and Intentional Jacob. Intentional segue. <laughs> Sorry, I interrupted you saying Bomp their name. Bomp and it. Jacob, thank you both for joining the Patreon this week. If you're curious what Patreon is, it gets you access to After Dark, which is just our podcast after the podcast. It's our second podcast every week where we just talk more stuff, Path of Exile, life, random things. It's just a great time all around, all around. Anyway, big shout out to all of our patrons. You guys rock lots the most. <laughs> Justin right. takes out silences, but sometimes they're pretty funny. That was pretty funny. They are. They're just a lot to keep in. Anyway, yeah. How was your week? That's good. Uh, well, good. I mean, school's done for the kids. So, yeah, they're happy. Yeah. And uh, I was all excited to sleep in today, right? They're, I mean, it's, today's our Thursday. Right. And the kids, some, I don't know how it works, but their last day. Yeah, why not end on a Wednesday? The the week. Makes total sense. Yeah, right. And mm -hmm. it wasn't even a normal school day. They they all, like the whole school went to a beach. Yeah. So that was awesome. But anyway, today was the first day. Now we're recording a day early just because of long weekend festivities happening this weekend. But I was all excited to sleep in today. And then Justin's like, hey, Ty, want to record thursday morning instead of friday morning and i'm yeah justin that sounds really awesome i'm I really know. glad we're doing that I'm so. sorry no that's fine oh, Don't actually worry before you get it, into I it i just think you're a complete tit well it's because of happy canada day which we've already said which is tomorrow for us so happy canada day passed and also happy and independence three... day for the americans oh, yeah. on july 4th i think that's the day after this comes out on monday happy america day america america and uh Anyway, Canada Day was a few days ago, mm -hmm. but yeah, so I was all excited to sleep in and you screwed that up, but it'll You're be welcome. a lot of fun. Thanks for having us tomorrow. Yeah, it's going to be fun. House. We got a lot of people come. It's going to be a good time. It is. Did you have a week? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 it was, I don't, I'm, it worked. Listen, I worked. Uh, <laughs> that's another reason we're recording this early today because I got meetings coming up, but, uh, it, yeah, it was actually a really good week. We had great weather. The weather was really nice, except, I mean, yesterday was a little eh, but uh, yeah, it was a really good week. Got lots accomplished and played some Path of Exile. Our private league starts to, uh, tomorrow, actually, for us, Friday, July 1st. So if you're hearing this and you still want to get into it, you should hop in to our Discord. You can find it under announcements. So Yeah, it's about 10 days and you're not, it doesn't matter if you're late or not. Yeah, there's prizes for like top three of each class, but there's also lotteries for being ahead of Tyler and I because it's hardcore and, you know, people die. So yeah, it was, it was, uh, I played F1 and, and PoE this week on the free time that I had. I actually played a little bit more F1 than PoE. And it was a good week. Yeah, the kids are done school, which is, bleh, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I can't wait yeah. for September, but. <laughs> of course not. Of course not. Yeah, it was good. Did you do awesome. anything else or what else? That's well, it. Well, I it? mean, this this week for, um, I spent most of my, I mean, we hung out and we played Path of Exile on Monday night, which is what we typically do. Um, and. I had a couple evenings free, which was nice, and I used that time instead because F1 2022 just came out, mm -hmm. and that's one of the few games that could take us away from Path of Exile. It seems like we've been saying that a lot, but it's just one of those years where <laughs> it's actually, you know, a From Software game comes out, and Age of Empires comes out, and like just these companies that don't put out games that often just end up coming out with games that could take us away from Path of Exile. They came out with them all in the same year. Uh, but anyway, F1 2022 has really different um, gameplay and settings. And so I was, uh, you know, like the new game, tweaking my settings, right? I was changing my camera optimization and the camera settings as well, going through a whole bunch of different stuff, just, you know, getting it ready so that when we start racing on Tuesdays, I don't have to do that or tolerate a crappy camera setup once, uh, once we're racing. So I did that instead, but oh, oh, the yard work, Justin. Oh, it's glorious. I've yep. never had so much fun weeding. It's oh, great. Yeah. Like I hate digging up a brand new lawn in certain areas, but oh my goodness, when you get that big weed, and it's like you get the mother load, you get that one weed where it's like, that's where they're all coming from. Oh, I feel like angels are singing. As soon as you bring it up, it's just glorious. It's awesome. And the lawn's looking so nice and thick. And I got the, um, all the overcut completely under control now. So nice. 
just need to do some fill in for in the fall. I'll plant some seed in just a spotty area. Not going to overseed right off the bat. Be too much for the new seeds that just got planted this spring. But man, I can, oh, it's so nice and thick. And I'm doing about a three and a half inch cut. It's nice and long right after the, oh. And you I like the longer cut between though, right? my toes. I do because yeah. um, I don't use, I hand weed everything. Mm. I don't do any sprays or anything like that. And mm -hmm. so I, uh, it's so much easier for weed control with yeah, a long cut. Yeah, it's way easier to manage so, for sure. Oh yep. my goodness. It's, yeah, it's worth mowing the lawn if you need to. I hope I don't need to in the future, but it's worth mowing the lawn twice a week just so that I don't have to fight weeds. Mm -hmm. So I just have to fight the weeds now because the lawn was, of course, non-existent a couple months ago. So mm -hmm. and some weeds started growing. Do you don't spray because you don't like to spray or because of the work? It is quite a bit of work to spray. I remember spraying, you borrowed mine once and it was, it's right, a lot of work. Yeah. And I must nod of the, the spray and the contraption, which was really awesome. I'm, I, I don't know if I did it wrong or something, but it didn't seem to work as efficiently as it did for you. So maybe I was trying to be too cheap and sprayed too little on certain spots. Hmm. Um, but then there's other things where it, it is a lot of work. It's also a long waiting game and you need to time it perfectly with weather, yeah, you do. right? Yeah. You know, like some of these like weed killer sprays. You have to do it when it's dry. You can't do it when it's wet. It can't rain for the next 48 hours or whatever, you know, the rules are and the little thing. And I'm like, yeah, it's just easier to go out, rain or shine, dig it up. I and mean, it's so, a lot I mean, of work, though, when you overseed too, because you got to, you got to make sure that it's wet and you got to time your cuts. Like there's, there's a lot of work that goes into overseeding too. You didn't say you were going to overseed now, right? Because this would be no, way too no, late. No, no, no. I'm just going to be doing in this, in the springtime, or sorry, fall? in the fall, okay. I'm going to yeah, yeah. spot seed. Yep. Just in the spot where there's gaps sure. where I've had to dig it up because of some of the clover weeds. Yeah, you wouldn't work now so, if you did it anyway. If you did it now. No, no, no. Yeah. No, no. And uh, I'm probably not going to overseed for a bit just to see how the... How thick it grows in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I want to... Sure. I'll actually want to see what the product is like. Yep. Yeah, I imagine and it will so, too. I imagine it will fill in quite a bit. Yeah. So... Yeah, so... And it's already looking to really it. good, so... It is, yeah. especially in the front for sure. The back is where I need to do a little bit more work. We have some huge, huge evergreens in the back mm -hmm. that no matter how hot it is, like it could be 30 degree weather and I'll walk in the back to see if the grass is dry enough to cut yet and it'll still be moist and it'll be like 3 p.m. and it's been 30 degrees all day just because it's always shady. Yep. So, uh, yeah, so the back's a little bit harder to get to and the grass didn't grow in the permanent shade areas. The grass didn't grow as thick, obviously. So, I don't know, might change some gardening plans there as well. We've, revamped uh where we're going to be putting some plants and gardens and all that because our whole everything was dug up like right, right to the foundation we had no yard so we got to choose you know new garden layouts and all that so now that we're seeing where the grass is and isn't growing might do a tiny bit more changing so it's been a lot of fun i've been having a great time with it for sure the house is a disaster mm -hmm. because i'm having so much fun outside sweet yeah and we, uh how's your yard that's looking great we we put in, my wife decided again that we needed a pool, which was awesome. Again? Yeah. So is this like every year, the man. second pool? No, this is like the fifth or it, well, it's literally been a brand new, every year I say, I don't want another pool, no more pools. And then we roll into summer and she's like, yeah, I'm going to go, I think I'm going to go pick up a pool. So what happens to your old pools? I cut them up. I throw them out. I don't want to clean Why? them. I don't want to clean oh. them. It usually what happens is it hits like middle of September and I'm like, no, it hasn't been cleaned. I don't want to deal with that. They're gross. They're disgusting. Like you have to, you have to like really clean them up to be able to pack them away. And I usually don't have time, especially as you're getting into September, it gets busy. And so then I've taken like a Sawzall to them before and I've just, yeah, I've cut them up. So I already know I that's what's going to happen to this one. I thought you could, uh, you know, I don't know, had a guy for that. I don't think there's a guy that would come in and clean a pool, like to pack what? it up. Pool cleaners are everywhere. That's yeah. where all the affairs start, remember? <laughs> yeah, definitely not pool in our guy. area. We don't have too many pool guys. I don't think that's a very blossoming job out in our area, but <laughs> uh, I just... Careful with yeah. the puns you use there, buddy. That's, yeah, so uh, it's it'll get cut up. But anyway, we have a pool, so I know... That's probably why. No, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you exactly no. why. Because people are coming over and my kids want one. That's it. That's it. My kids, no, my kids love can, pools. That's probably why you're not getting a pool guy. Oh yeah. I got to be careful. Yeah. You know, she's, she's just going to jump on the first <laughs> right, pool guy that comes. That's what's going to happen. That's right. They're always Did beautiful. You say, that's right. Pool guy. <laughs> that's right. So yep. anyway, but we have a pool for this weekend, so that'll be fun. And awesome. our backyard is, uh, it, 
the grass looks great. I, I can't really complain. I'm a little bit annoyed with my front yard because my neighbor reseeded his whole lawn again. It's like an annual thing. Yeah, man. He's doing it like almost every year. It's so weird. He tore the whole thing up and reseeded, which means that all of his cheap ass seeds blow into my yard. So again, I've got just a smorgasbord of grass, which irritates me because I purposefully tried to grow a very specific brew of grass in my front yard. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do. the Bermuda kind? No, we can't do Bermuda. You can't grow Bermuda grass. No, I know Uh, that was... It was mostly, it was, it was a, a, a bit of a mix, but it was, yeah, I, yeah, uh, it, it's just annoying me a little bit. And now I'm at the point where I, I'm again back to, do I just pull it all up? Do I just put in fake grass? I won't, but. There is somebody that has fake grass along the paper route that the kids and I do. Mm-hmm. Um, and it looked fantastic when we started in November. Yeah. It doesn't look fantastic anymore. Weeds can still grow through it. Um, it depends on how well it's put down though, too. Oh, it doesn't. So, yeah. I've never even considered it because that's the sissy way out, Justin. Yeah. But I'm getting yeah. there. I'm getting close I'll, to the I'll sissy show you, way. I'll show you the house. We'll drive by. All I right. was going to say we'll walk by and I corrected myself in my head beforehand because I know you wouldn't do that. I'm, so we'll drive by. out of your mind. Mm-mm. Yeah, that's right. That's how your shoes stay so clean. <laughs> it's true, actually. Yeah, you're right. Anyway, it was a good week. Let's, uh, let's jump into some POE stuff. It's not going to be a super long episode this week, probably just because... We got a private oh, league coming up. I'm yeah. excited for a private league. Me too. So we're going to record we'll after out. dark. Um, yeah, after dark will be in a couple in days. A couple days so Normally we'll get a chance to play. either right after or maybe eight hours after of the same day. But yeah, it's going to be a few days away. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Hang on a sec. Yeah, this week was a lot of uh, community stuff, right? They had the some more community showcases, Well Just Exile, Concept Art sounds i love the sound stuff i don't know what it is but i just think it's so neat because when you hear sounds so sorry i skipped ahead they had an announcement that explained the sounds of sentinels Mm -hmm. and yeah i mean it's a busy game and i remember some people in discord when they posted that art or when our discord posted that article they're like sentinels make sounds yeah that would be my thought too well it's but it's kind of interesting because of course they would make sounds like it's a game element you don't add something that doesn't make sounds but it it's nice to single out stuff that you would normally overlook. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because, I mean, people are putting in a lot of effort into these sounds, assumably, and then people aren't going to hear them. Yep. You know what I mean? It's kind of like how we were talking about with Camille and his music and, hey, how do you feel about streamers always muting your stuff and playing something else? It's one of those else, things right? that typically you do hear, you just don't know you're hearing it. Like sound yeah. design is such a big part of everything, but a lot of times it's something that the person's not actively aware they're hearing. Right. But if you took it away... It would yeah, be much more obvious. It's such a thankless job because if you do it wrong, everyone's like, uh, uh, but then if you do it right, Very nobody notices notice. it. Very few. Right. Well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, and that's almost kind of the point. Mm-hmm. You want it to be so natural. Yeah. Right. Very, it's almost, there's, should be, I guess, in a way, so few sounds where you're like, oh, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But like, if yeah. you have too much of that, then it's just a crazy convoluted thing, especially with how much crap's going on in the game. Mm-hmm. So anyway, it was cool. Clicked on the YouTube links and heard what the different sounds are and made me just want to go pew, pew, pew. But yeah, like no, the, I, li- I like those the from ships. the GGG perspective. The ships Pardon? in the Lego Star Wars when they shoot <laughs> yeah. the lasers. Yeah, it's actually the the <laughs> pilots going pew, 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 pew. <laughs> yeah. So good. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I enjoy hearing ggg's side of you know how you go about sounds mm-hmm. i think the last time there was a sound one was when they came out with the the, the more like fleshy skills there was like sanguinate and another one that came out at the same time mm. and they were talking about using like plastic bottles and stuff cool anyway yeah it was kind of neat and it's patch notes mm-hmm. now there was actually so that would that's that was like the whole week in terms of ggg posting yep. stuff but uh outside of uh, other mediums i you know but uh, there, the patch notes actually had a few things that uh, I was quite excited for the highlight. Yeah, point two one highlight. C. Yeah. Did you go through it or do you want I me to just tell you what I... Yeah. You, you tell me what you liked. I, there were some things that stood out to me as well. You can change the keybind for opening the Atlas skill tree with in the options menu now. I love cool. that. Mm-hmm. Well, Should it is have, good. It's kind of weird that that wasn't always available, but it is nice that yeah, you can do it now. It is. Mm-hmm. And hopefully that comes to console slash controller support because right now, you have to go into, so you have to hit the back button, right? Or select, whatever you would call it. Tab over to the Atlas, then push down on the left analog stick and up on the D-pad. Oh, wow. 
that's quite a few buttons can away. Can you and rebind much in console though? I thought you couldn't no, you rebind can't much. So no, I doubt you can that's only coming. rebind skills to already predetermined skill yeah. keys. So I doubt that's coming and, to console. Well, no. I mean, uh, if it, <laughs> it's not, it, I I it's would not, hope if it comes. <laughs> I would hope if it comes to controller support, it also comes to console. Yeah, I don't think it will come to controller support no. at all. And, uh, you know, I guess normally maybe the Atlas passive tree doesn't have to be accessed that often, that frequently. But for me, in for the circumstance big... that I was in, when you're flying through maps and if yeah. you have a build where you're actually going through. Now, I wasn't flying through maps. You were flying through maps, but I was flying through maps with you. So we would be doing six maps at a time. You're in it every map and boom, boom for a while right. and it's ding yeah. sh, ding sh, ding and so i did find it quite tedious so hopefully it's something that comes but it is nice for the keyboard and mouse players that that's there uh radius of ground effects from map modifiers are no longer affected by increases and in reductions to map modifiers yeah i'm surprised they missed this one it was so annoying to have like burning ground roll well burning ground was great because i moved faster on burning ground but desecrated ground desecrated ground to roll on the map and then a modifier would make it literally the entire ground was desecrated ground. And it's is this a new bug? I don't remember or it ever being like this before. I don't know like if it's a bug before. or not, but I don't, oh, I'm okay. not sure. I don't remember it ever being this bad to the point where when because desecrated ground when you're playing a low life build is really annoying because I need to stop taking damage to start regening my energy shield. And yes. Or uh, Desecrated Ground makes that yeah. very difficult. Even with, it, like, I have huge, uh, overcapped Chaos Resist. It didn't matter because it's still a degen, and I'm not stopping taking damage, and I don't have anything that makes me continuously regen even while taking damage. Sure. So, And it was everywhere. Like, literally, it would be work to try and find a spot that didn't have Desecrated Ground on it. So yeah, I'm very happy that they're fixing this. To me, this yeah. is a fix. I don't remember it ever being as bad mm. as as it is. So, yeah. It's also a good combination to fix this when they add sounds to, because they've added now sounds to some of this ground effect. Yeah, to added sounds for burning, chilled, and shocked ground. I wonder what that's going to sound like. It's actually in the game. I just haven't turned it on yet. Can you imagine you're walking through burning and you just hear like crackling yeah. the whole time? You're like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> or or it's your character. It's actually dialogue options where ow, it's like, ow, 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 ow. ow, ow. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, that's cold. But yeah, I wonder what it sounds like. Hopefully it's not. I'm sure it's done really I'm well. I'm sure it's pretty minimal, yeah. I imagine. I mean, it's not going to really help you not die because you're still I not going to see anything anyway. I wonder what the point of it is. Like, is it so that you know it's around? Wouldn't that be funny if that was the reason? Like, forget making it visually clear. We're going to make a sound. <laughs> <laughs> this is our fix. Well, imagine if that's what they did when they remember the on death explosions when they uh, when they yeah, fixed the that like yeah. four or five years ago, right? Mm -hmm. Where there would be like, Super you bright. know, and it would be... Yeah, they changed it from being dull, and I would always die to them because I'd never see them. Now it's like, I still almost die to them, but I see them just in time. Mm -hmm. And that's a 100% me thing. I think they're very <laughs> they're bright. visually in your face. Yeah, 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 definitely. Uh, imagine if instead of doing that, they're like, we added some sounds. Good yeah. luck. It's just like a very <laughs> slow wind up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that'd be awesome. No. I don't know what so the I'm... reason would be. It's cool that they've done it. It'll be interesting to see if you hear it, but it's not, yeah, it, it, and I hope the reason was not to help you know if you're on it because well, I would much rather just see it. I, I'm just curious what the reason is. I mm -hmm. think it'd be. I fixed a bug where hexproof enemies could sometimes be unaffected by curses that are that affect hexproof enemies. Yeah, that's a good fix. So that's annoying if you're playing something that's hexproof. Like an occultist? Mm hmm. That's I don't know if it was all why. of them or if it was just the one off. I'm not really sure, but I'm I'm pretending that's why I sucked. That's why your build didn't that's work. That's why my I build knew didn't it. work out because <laughs> it was the hex proof enemies that I couldn't hex. So that's it. But anyway, yeah, some good some good stuff. I'm excited to see the uh the sounds, the zilches, my character complaining about uh when they're wearing sandals instead of like some big greaves. Ow, 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 ow. Mm hmm So uh, but a couple neat things happened this week though while i was playing and i thought it was what this one here was on reddit um there was somebody that displayed themselves and i i didn't see all the detail in it like i don't know if they were do if it was because of a certain unique item or not but you know is it the searing x arts where they do all the flame balls mm -hmm. coming at you and it's almost like a dodge puzzle 
Yeah, it's like Mario, but annoying. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, they use totems to block. To block them? Clever. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've heard of people doing that. And, I mean, I didn't see the totems dying, so maybe they were just very quick at play, replacing them the and having a nice circle die. behind I them. I think it would, I, I think when it gets hit, it dies, but you have to be very quick at placing them anyway, especially in the second phase when they're coming much quicker. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know if that would be you easier with controller too. or... You can yeah. use minions too, like they'll take the hit from them. <laughs> I really hope a zombie doesn't die from one hit. <laughs> oh my goodness. That would suck. So anyway, that was that was kind of a fun fun thing to see. I mean, maybe that's something that everybody's known for forever, but I just saw it for the first time because I don't really Maybe Maven totems. should just do her job and z zilch more of the balls. A little bit better. Well, she's not a baby yeah. anymore, right? Now she's... Yeah, she's grown up. Get at it, lady. Yeah, show yeah. up. Stop doing the outside ball. What good is that to me? Fill some balls in the middle. Anyway. So this is hey. probably old. What? I was going to say, my not Syrian Exarch side, but World of Eater side, I got another Ashes of the Stars to drop. Oh, very nice. <laughs> yeah. Wow. While I was streaming too. It was funny. I know people are making fun of your RNG. Like it's because you've spent a lot of money with GGG or because you started streaming recently no, or I, whatever I it is. Like they keep... I paid GGG clearly. Oh, you yeah, RNG. Yeah, for the increase. <laughs> yeah, you because... What do you have? Yeah, uh, you got a mage got a blood, mage blood. and then you I've got a headhunter drop. Got the headhunter, yeah. but I bought that. I've had very good drops. I'm hoping this RNG carries into the private league because uh, that's more scary. I hope scary. it doesn't. No, oh, it I hope to. you get normal life going on soon. <laughs> oh man, I I need to have some success in my life against you. I'm actually saving this ashes because I might build something around the headhunter if in I standard? continue. No, no, no. In, in, the, <laughs> in after the private league, if I'm still feeling POE, because I have F1 2022, I'm very excited to play it. I spent way more time, like actually customizing stuff, changing how my pedals work, how the wheel works, how the game view looks. But in the end, I know what's going to happen. I'm going to play through the season, like the career, and then probably not play until cross platform comes up. So once cross platform comes up, then I'll be able to play with you guys, which is the the thing I'm more keen to do. But I'm still very much into this league, so I'm curious to see after the private league, if I'm still feeling it, I might actually make something around the headhunter or the ashes. Otherwise, I'll just give the two away because somebody else can probably make a better build than I can anyway. But yeah. Anyway, sorry, mm. what were you going to say? I just got excited to share that I had another third ashes <laughs> drop. <laughs> it's not you. that hard, guys. It's really not. Like, well, are you fully spec'd so that you have a greater chance of the Eater of Worlds showing up? No. I'm 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 into the Eater of Worlds only um on the top right, uh just halfway up the tree on each side. And that just gives you I think it's an increased chance to make it count for double. Yeah, you so do. you you have the chance of frequenting the Eater of Worlds more, but you don't have an increased drop chance, right? That's correct. Because there's the only drop chance you can increase is uh was it flesh? Oh right. There's yes, only, there's only one right. thing you can increase. Uh the, otherwise I have nothing on them. But uh, I think I counted, I've done like 40, 35 to 40 Eater of Worlds so far this league, somewhere in that range. And I've had three Ashes drop and, and, and other drop from him too. He's made, he's made me good. <laughs> you should just see showing. his... Just, just, just point this out. Just look at his face. Because I know there's smirk. people listening that are just cringing and they're angry. And all I'm saying is you just got to try harder, guys. You just got to try. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's your fault that yeah. they're not happening. That's yeah, right. That's how you know, RNG works. It's a fault based system. 110% every time. And uh, you'll be rewarded. So, that's you know, right. positive mindset, guys. Positive mindset. <laughs> if you strap on the skates and you give 99%, go home. That's right. So anyway, yeah. uh, what were you, you going to bring up? Mm, it was probably really good. Yeah, I'm sure it was important. I apologize. And, oh, please, Justin, you're so kind. Uh, how are you going to talk with us when we were playing Formula One? I guess you got to sign into the Xbox app on the PC now. I don't need to talk to you. <laughs> I'll be. <laughs> I figured it's gonna be like, hey guys, you can sign into Discord or I'll be wait. Oh well, yeah, because Discord doesn't work on the, that shitty box you have. No, you have uh, to use Xbox Party. You can use mobile. There's a PC app for it. Well, I sometimes use the PC app to talk with them. There, yeah, there's something I know that I was reading that EA is gonna make it so that you have to go through like their account thing to group up together. Oh, and interesting. So there will be some sort of friend system that way, and. um I don't actually know. I don't care. I'll figure it out. If I have to add a Xbox app to my thing, then I'll figure it out. I mean, it's hard to talk to you when I'm so far ahead, though. 
Like, am I supposed to just yell backwards? I don't know <laughs> yeah, how that works. Right. Oh, wouldn't that be awesome if uh, what they, they have because they're like doing vicinity. VR as well, right? Yeah. So I it's debated like, hooking mine up just to try it, but I feel like I might puke as I'm driving. Sorry, it'll help you appreciate your wheel more. I'm appreciating it pretty good right now. Puke for science. Puke for science. Yeah. You got it. I, I don't know. I'll figure it out, though. I'll find some right. way to do it. Well, hopefully it's soon. Uh, so I discovered something that everybody else probably knew since the dawn of time, right? So obviously mirrored items, they're almost like corrupted items in a way. I guess you can okay. slightly modify corrupted items, especially a lot more with all the things that have been added to the game over the last quite a few leagues. But a, a mirrored item mirrored. is you, like, they're just, that's like the ultimate corruption, I guess you could say. You sure. just can't do anything with it. And I just realized just now that the visual, the item itself, is mirrored it's backwards yeah, so like the visual inventory right so if a ring is i don't really know how to describe it let's say let's say you if have it's an left arrow. to right it's now right to left right yeah the yeah. arrow that's mirrored if you had an arrow that was mirrored and it was pointing to the right the mirrored version of it is pointing to the left right and i just realized that these last couple of weeks yeah. well i guess I if think... you don't see them in your inventory too often it's one i think the way that i saw them the most was with six link drops from chests that had mirrored items so it's quite common to get two six links to drop at once and then you pick them up and it's the same item but yeah you can see that they're flipped pretty cool mm -hmm. so yeah a uh, nice little tidbit it's clever yeah yeah it's cool uh do you know how multi-strike and ruthless work together i thought i did so remember, uh, multi-strike, you I know multi -strike. do one action, and then there's two copies of the hit. Right. Right? Ruthless gives you nothing except on your third hit. So you right. hit three times, and then there's that. So this is... And I... So my zombie guide that I had for a while is pure physical, and on paper, the DPS of multi-strike and ruthless together is huge huge probably very high so yep. i would always get people like why don't you use these two skills why don't you use these two skills and from all the re and i did tons of research on it that guide is like vetted and filtered through a hundred times over from what i gathered multi-strike and ruthless would ruthless would only do a strong hit every third time you activated multi-strike so technically be like once every nine hits because it was based on your hits, not copied hits. That's the information that I got. So I, I would say like, I know it looks good on paper, but you're really not hitting that frequently with multi-strike versus ruthless with how ruthless triggers. Okay. So somebody was asking about this on Reddit and uh, Mark GG underscore GGG replied, and I don't understand it. Okay. I don't get it at all. Can you read this? It's like Do, a couple the paragraphs. Whole thing? Sure. Right, but okay. I mean, then I'll not talk. So then you can I don't take know, it out. I don't know what the question was because the all you're showing here is Mark's response. But he says, "Think of it this way: you are not attacking three times; you are attacking once with two copies. With multi strike, your three attacks would hit nine times. Ruthless would be applied to the seventh, eighth, and ninth hit." How, that's so weird to me. I don't how. It's kind of weird to me that it wouldn't be the third, sixth, and ninth hit. Right. Like I so, so as soon as I read that, I'm like, that that doesn't make any. I don't see the logic in like I'm not trying to like argue with anybody, but I'm like I I don't see the reason that it would be seventh, eighth, and ninth. I was exactly like you. It'd be third, sixth, and ninth for me. But so anyway, go ahead. And so it says uh, when supported by multi strike support, ruthless ruthless blows work differently. Instead of occurring every third hit, it occurs every third multi strike. So every third multi strike is when ruthless occurs which still is very odd to me that it still wouldn't be three six and nine yeah instead of seven eight and nine uh the quoted part is technically incorrect in that nothing about how ruthless blows works is actually different with multi-strike to without Sweet. they are simply completely different effects which care about fundamentally different things and neither of them care about number of hits that's not true uh, ruthless cares ruthless about, care about number of hits yeah every third hit you do ruthless, ruthless explicitly tracks how many times you use the skill when you push the button or leave it held when finishing the previous skill use and pay the cost of the skill to start doing it that's a single use okay so then so what he's saying is ruthless doesn't care about the hit it cares about how many times you use the skill okay 
Which, again, if that is true, I still don't understand why Three, would Ruthless and track 7, 8, and 9? Why wouldn't it, if it was based on the attack, wouldn't it only do it on 9? I don't understand why it would have done it on 7 and 8 right. instead of on 9. Anyway, uh, multi-strike causes each use of the skill to repeat twice. Each single use of the skill now performs the animation three times instead of once. But that's still one skill use, which is why you only pay the cost once for the whole set of repeats and don't need to consume another cooldown use when it repeats. Which fine, if that is the case, and he's saying Ruthless is based on the skill, I still feel like if I use Multi-Strike three times, shouldn't Ruthless only hit once? Unless it's hitting... Oh, maybe Ruthless is hitting for all of the three hits of the final Multi-Strike then. If Ruthless is following the skill and the skill Multi-Strike is on the... So Ruthless, you hit the skill once... That's one count for Ruthless. You hit the skill twice, and we're talking about something that's using multi-strike. That's hitting it twice, but when you hit the skill the third time, Ruthless is applying oh, to all three hits of the multi-strike. Okay. okay, that makes sense. Okay, that makes a lot of sense then, because I'm now you have... His, yep, I'm going to go finish ahead. his sign. Uh, any given use or individual repeat of the skill could cause an arbitrary number of hits, which neither support cares about in the least multi-strikes damage bonus applies to all hits from the specified repeat each time you use it and ruthless damage bonus applies to all hits from the specified use of the skill including all times that skill uses repeat so there you go that okay. makes sense boy that is a lot i mean reading his thing let me actually figure it out but i would not have even guessed that that was a that that's how it would have worked that's cool to know now it is I do appreciate when he does this, but he he's so he's just way too smart when it comes to POE that sometimes even reading it, it's like, a uh, guy, we're uh, idiots here. Can you please dumb it down well, a little bit? He I, did I read a pretty it good job about though. four times, and I I didn't quite grasp it, and so mm -hmm. I'm glad you you did that, and I really appreciate that he does do this. Like these are nice long, this is how it works explanations, yeah. and I, I he, the guy's like the guy that knows everything you know at totally. the company and takes the time to do this so i absolutely love it but it's kind of like remember back in the bible days right when the new no i don't I <laughs> yeah, remember when we were there no but like you know you'd have an apostle who would write a letter to a church and then everybody would gather around to read it and meditate on it and discuss it and you know like dissect it well it's kind of like that with us with mark stuff when he writes something big like that we all have to get together read it together and then we can figure it out together you know what i mean because i i tried and uh could it does anyway, make sense I, it now makes a lot I'm... more sense now that you yeah. read it for me and i had like yeah. four different iterations in my head of already previously reading it okay so it's every time you use the skill not hit and i typed up ruthless support while you were talking and it does say use the skill it has nothing to do with hits yeah, and so that's hits. sometimes cool i kind of wish that and maybe it is maybe use is capitalized and I never noticed it, kind of like how hits is always capitalized. Hmm. Maybe that's, and I, and I missed it. But anyway, th yeah, really, really cool to know. So now it actually hits on the 7th, 8th, and ninth hit. Right. Hmm. Still not something I would use in the zombie build, because that's still six hits of being stationary that aren't getting a damage bonus. So Right. It is a really big increase in damage, but it's a big increase in damage from those last it's, hits. If I remember correctly, it's 98% more. Yeah. Yeah. And the reason that I didn't use it is you're not always in a circumstance where you're needing that third hit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I guess it doesn't matter how much time is between those hits. Nope. Doesn't. That's right. Hmm. Awesome. The more you know. I was looking, I was doing some theory crafting while I was uh, broadcasting. I think that was, wasn't that on Monday? I guess that was the only time I played PoE. So it must have been on Monday. I was doing some broadcasting and, um, Sojo was helping out with some theory crafting and a couple others as well. And I was looking at the Raider a lot and I was reminded, Justin, that the Raider still only has six keystones in its ascendancy. Hmm. I and I was like, I remember when they started doing all like a whole bunch of the revamps, right? Like they started doing stuff like they added pure, Herald of Purity stuff to the Guardian. They added Herald of Agony stuff to the Pathfinder. And, you know, there was that era, I guess, small era of times where they were like really trying to rebalance and refocus the ascendancies and then they did it a couple other times right just tweaking it up but i wonder i think there's going to be another ascendancy not shuffle because i think they actually have really good themes but i think these ascendancies well maybe not how about this i'll ask you this question do you think these ascendancies need to be 
quote unquote perfected before PoE two comes out. Because PoE two is going to be like the counter opposite. However, that is that they're going to come up with the new nineteen new ascendancies. They're going to kind of maybe they be like counter opposites or something. I don't know. But do you think these ones that we're currently using need to be perfected before we see the other ones? I don't think these current ones are going to change almost at all. I think. Uh, I mean, I. To be completely honest, I think you're going to see very few people play them once PoE 2 is out. Oh, totally. Totally. I don't think they're going to be shifted. I don't think there's going to be a ton of effort put into them. I think there's a much bigger necessity for them to make sure that the new ones come out very strong and well tested. No, oh, for sure. For but sure. But you I, don't, I don't think there's any. You don't think there needs to be a balance in place? Well, what's the balance, though? I, I, I don't know really. I don't know what you mean. I feel like there's a relatively decent balance between them right now. I think there's maybe some that are underutilized and not used much, but I don't think, I, I don't know. I don't feel like I'm pigeonholed to picking a specific um, ascendancy. I think there's some that I avoid, but that's mostly based on my play style. Sure. So uh, I'm not sure that you ever have multiple, however many ascendancies there are, and they're all supposed to be... There's no way to balance them because there's so many things to balance them against. Yeah. I th I I don't there's a lot of ascendancies I don't play just because those playstyles don't interest me. The ones that do interest me, I do find them equally tempting for their own theme for whatever they are and I do have a very difficult time choosing between ascendancies. So I guess from a user perspective that I like, you know, I don't have the game mastered, I, I would find them the current ascendancies quite well balanced in terms of their power. But it does still drive me nuts that there's ascendancies like the Raider that only have six keystones. Like I'm basically only choosing two keystones I'm not going to take. As opposed to so many others where they'll have eight or ten keystones to pick from. And like you look at the Juggernaut, you look at the Necromancer, you look at... Even the Occultist had one removed and nothing, nothing to replace it, right? And then when you look at the Elementalist, there's a lot you're leaving out. So, yeah, but it also depends on the build too. Like Elementalist, there, there, even if you had all the keystones, you wouldn't be gaining the benefit depending on what you were playing. Oh, definitely. You know what I mean? So I don't know. But I feel like I, it's got a pretty good balance. I, I agree in terms of power. I would just like to see stuff that have the, the ascendancies that have less keystones get more options. Sure. Because I, I find that those, saying. like I, the Raider rate is very, very strong. It means it's a lot easier to reject as well if two keystones, if three keystones don't interest me. I mean, there's only yeah. six, so the I'm going to pick something that's going to benefit more. By PoE2, it won't matter because you're not even going to be looking at the Raider. So, you know, like, eh, I know the idea is to try and have two games running, but let's let's not kid ourselves. They're going to be, it's going to be PoE2. Oh, well, yeah, people are going to want to try new stuff and be excited about all that. And so... Just thinking, you know, hype-wise, preparing-wise, if you do want to ignore and you really want to focus on the new ascendancies, maybe we're coming to a league where there's going to be one more ascendancy, like a big massive ascendancy tweak, and then mm -hmm. they're like, okay, that's our test, we've got it. Next league is the making the minor modifications for the things they might have overlooked for that big test, and then they're basically ignored until. I don't, I, I would like to see one more of those. Mm. I, I don't, yeah, I don't care. Awesome. <laughs> oh, that, that, I'm that's, fine. That's good. Yep. What do you got? Well, I've been kind of grumpy with PoE yeah. this league. Yeah. Yeah. You've had some unhappy streams. Yeah. We've had some unhappy yeah. conversations. Uh, well, two reasons. I'm trying mm -hmm. builds because now I'm not doing guide writing. I don't have the pressure to play a build that I'm putting out in the public, right? I don't have to do the same builds that I'm creating just so that I... And it's wise to do that when you have a guide, play the build so that you understand the feedback for the current situation. Um, but because I'm not doing guides, I was excited to try a new build. Um, I'm a very big Curse fan, so I was doing my best to try that. First build didn't work out. I tried it with the Scion, just didn't do enough damage. It would, I think it would have done enough damage. Uh, my triple blasphemy... Um, so what was I doing? I was doing a Scion. And I was going with three blasphemies, Herald of Agony, and Blade Vortex with poison. And the damage was low, but it was because it was a defensive character, right? Obviously, I had other skills besides those, but it didn't do enough damage. And I think it would have done enough damage in last league, but because of how Arch Nemesis ch or Sentinel has changed with the Arch Nemesis mods, it didn't do enough damage for me to be able to go through the map as a defensive character. So then I 
re-rolled as an occultist, which gives different types of defensive perks, but a way more chaos damage in the tree. And um, both kind of failed. The idea failed. And it was because there was just so much damage that comes from outside of my three blasphemies. And that was where a substantial part of my defense was coming from, even though I had other auras and other things reserving my mana that were that definitely helped with the survivability. But just because it was only within that proximity that it mattered, it wasn't just permanent like, you know, armor or evasion would be. So both failed and it was kind of a crappy league to test it out on because of just the big changes. But I also wasn't a fan of a lot of how Arch Nemesis was created or implemented i should say and some of the mods that are there just made me really the whole like failing in gameplay but then also not liking how it was implemented just made me a super grump so i got a new plan just yeah new game what are you playing now <laughs> that's right yeah <laughs> i'm playing sims no um i'm gonna play path of exile with a new attitude okay I, and Starting I know that sounds now. That's, that's right. Yeah, I think I've said that like 20 times since I started playing Path of Exile. But okay, no, no, actually starting next episode, new, new uh -huh. attitude. But no, so I've been playing with the game so far with the expectations about, with expectations of how GGG wants the game to be. So when they say they want the game to be slowed down, I'm like, sweet, that means I can play slowly. You know what I mean? When they say we want to buff rare so that every now and then you're surprised, like rarely you're surprised by a rare, that's my expectation, right? Obviously, that's not how it's been. The game's been speeded up. It's once again uh, damage first type of thing. And there's a lot of rares all over the place where the rare modifiers are stacking like crazy and you have no idea what's going on. So instead... I'm going to start framing my my paradigm and my expectations around the game actually is. And I'm going to ignore the company's intentions. So no matter what they say they want the gameplay to be like, I'm going to be like, that's cool. That's nice. Can't wait till it's there. I'm going to try and remember what the gameplay is actually like instead of trying to remember the way they want the game to be. And if I can ignore their goals and aspirations, maybe I'll have a much more accurate perspective of the game and it'll Im definitely impact how i make my builds but i think it'll also increase my enjoyment level yeah yeah that's that's about it did you not hear anything i had a thing do no, i did say it all, no, i'll say it all over again no it's gonna be great okay so why does there i guess i've maybe i've just kind of since the last time that the last time i've ever heard them say anything about how they want the game to be was a bit ago when chris mentioned that they were trying to slow the game down and it became very apparent within a league or two that that wasn't the direction the game was going. Uh, I think it actually lasted for one league. I feel like that was around Metamorph. And I feel like somewhere around there is where you felt like, okay, there actually is some benefit to playing tanky and a little bit slower. That bossing idea. I don't. Th I think they very quickly shifted way, way, way left of that and back into a speed meta. But um, I don't know that I've ever paid much attention to their direction or thought for the game as to how I would play it. I'm not sure. I mean, I think I think you should always go into it with a somewhat attempt at a positive outlook because otherwise, why are you playing it for any game? That's not just you or Path of Exile. But if if the game isn't sort of doing what you want it to do or it's not playing the way you want it to play, um, I guess if it is just a mindset thing, then maybe, yeah, shifting your mindset into trying to be a little bit more positive is great. But sometimes the, the league mechanic the way the game is just doesn't work i've had that before for for many leagues before where i'm just like this just i'm not feeling this i can't get into it so but i yeah i don't know i think yeah. going into any game you should have a somewhat positive outlook otherwise you should just play something else because yeah. games are never ever going to be fun if uh if it's not going well and you're negative about it mm -hmm. it's just going to get worse and worse i've uh i've I mean, this is the first league in forever that I haven't enjoyed. And it's just because I feel like the style of Arch Nemesis modifiers and the frequency of them and the combination of them and then the lack of information in the game, it just kills casual gamers. Like there, there's, it's just so much more you don't know that you need to know to improve your character. Um, but for me, I just didn't realize, and I guess that's the way it is with, with any expectation. You don't realize what's impacting your assumptions or attitude towards something. And so I just didn't realize how impacted I was. But 
by what GGG's intentions for the game were as opposed to what I'm actually playing. And so I'm going to hit that reset button, I think. And uh, when it comes time to making or hearing news about 319 and applying it, I'm um, hopefully that reset button hit will apply to my uh, theory crafting going into 319. What are you giggling about? You're not even uh, listening to I just realized something somewhat negative or, or not great. And that is that because I didn't want to wear the head phones that I normally wear for when we record because I got to run to a meeting afterwards I'm just running the in earbuds I routed the audio differently for us to talk and for me to hear you which means you, your audio is not backed up so hopefully <laughs> nothing screws up on your end or this will be a very awkward conversation of me talking to dead air speaking of awkward conversation I just noticed I was like how come I'm not seeing his bars going up and down that's really odd and then I thought oh shit that's right, I routed the audio a different way. Speaking of awkward conversation, this is what it's like speaking to an editor. It's a one-sided <laughs> conversation all the time uh, because he's on the other end going, hmm. I'm thinking okay. about like... Look, yeah, no, I'm not thinking anything at all. I am listening I'm to you. Yeah, but yeah, 100%. Anyway. Well, I'm glad. I'm looking forward to a new positive Tyler. Super. Well, this you... last Tyler has been a grab. Not my fault. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's been a crappy, crappy league for casual players really crappy how would you then in this way do you think that arch nemesis modifiers need to be fixed or tweaked do you like how they are so my thought for arch nemesis is i think there are i think there should not be 80 i think there should be maybe half that or less oh mods think, in total mm -hmm. in the mod i think pool? some of them okay. should just be gone i think some of them are awful uh, I have bitched about Effigy since day one, but there's other ones too that I don't like. Uh, I also think Arch Nemesis should scale. I think, I don't mind seeing some Arch Nemesis modifiers early. I think there's some that you shouldn't see early if you can't counter them, but I would rather see them scale. I want to see me fighting an Arch Nemesis at 10% of its power in Act 1 and 2, and that their difficulty of their power, that Arch Nemesis power is scaling as you're getting into further monster level of zones i don't think you should be hitting a full 100 percent arch nemesis modifier in, in act one i think that's nonsense so even if they are currently scaled they need to be scaled more they are there's they're not they're scaled based on just the monster they're not scaled on the the strength of the arch nemesis so uh, the arch nemesis modifier for frost weaver is modified by the fact that you're fighting maybe a, a monster level 20 monster so it's it's damage is going to be adjusted to that monster but what i'm saying is it should be even less that i'm like fighting only 10 percent of the power of that frost weaver hmm. i think it should i think it shouldn't be the fact that you're hitting something like a mana siphoner i should not be fighting a 100 percent strength mana siphoner in act two and three that to me is it's just nonsense it's so dumb so i think the difficulty of the modifier of arch nemesis should scale as you get into red maps I think some of them should just go away. Like Mana Siphoner. Uh, I, I, Mana Siphoner is kind of dumb, but uh, it, it looks cool though. But um, I think that that would, I think that would do a really good job towards fixing it. Cause I actually don't think Arch Nemesis is terrible. I think there's just some modifiers that are really stupid. And I think you're making it, I absolutely, I 100, I could not even, I don't even know what the percentage is. Whatever infinite percentages, I insanely disagree with them when they make, acts one through 10 harder. I think that is the dumbest shit GGG has ever done. Just piss off with touching act one through 10 and make the mapping some sort of progressive difficulty. But I think making the acts more difficult is just, it is one of the stupidest decisions they've ever made. I think they're really, really dumb. Don't mess up my progress of getting to the actual end game. I feel like it's for fun. There's not like, if you progressively built up Arch Nemesis, at least I would learn them. I would have a, some ability to at least understand what they are and still kill them, not understand what they are and go, well, I got to control click this zone because I can't fight that thing. That right. should not be my you progress need to, that's through right. act one through 10. You need to know that's how to stupid. fight them and be successful. Sure, failure yeah. should come with it, but impossible makes yeah. zero it sense. It shouldn't be to when the point you have where no I can't options. do it. Right. So I think to me, if they scaled Arch Nemesis into endgame, got rid of it should be way less. There shouldn't be 80 modifiers. I feel like they did that as a bragging thing. Like, well, there's 80. Yeah, uh, nobody cares. Nobody wants to know what 80 different modifiers are. I would like to know what like maybe 20 or 30 of them are. Sure. So, because 
Go ahead. I'll, well, I, have I was a just going to say, because then I also wouldn't care if you had it. I, like, as I know you've talked before about the idea of like limiting how many there are. It's a tough one because I look at games like Diablo. I look back at some videos of it and I was like, man, that was so clear. But it was so clear because you only fought, even Diablo 3, I only fought one or two groups of mobs at a time. You weren't ever fighting a screen of mobs. And it's tough because in Path of Exile, that's kind of fun fighting large amounts of mobs. People talk about density and I'm one of them. I love fighting a lot. I just hate that I can't see anything. So I feel like if the modifiers for Arch Nemesis were more scaled and there were less of them, especially ones that work so awfully together, right? Uh, it wouldn't be so bad fighting more of them on the screen than right now where I, I, I get it. You can mouse over and see something, but that's so unrealistic. I can't do that while I'm playing the game. I can only do that when I'm dead. Yeah. I can't see what I'm fighting when I'm still alive. So yeah, I think if they scaled it, it would be great. I really like the boss modifiers that they have on them. Like when you come across somebody that, uh, like I think there's some that have Cyrus modifiers, some that have Kitava modifiers. And I like those. Like if you were to reduce them, reduce the global pool without the boss modifiers being included, because I think that's a really cool touch, especially because they have like audio cues from the boss as well, if I remember correctly. And so that's something that as you familiarize yourself with the game, including the audio cues, you're like, oh, right. Okay. I got it. I mean, unless, you know, you haven't come across Cyrus, but now you're fighting Cyrus skills, but maybe they shouldn't unlock though until you've fought them. Oh, what a great idea. I think that's, I love that kind of progression where you don't unlock something you until you come you across don't. it randomly, kind of like a help menu where you, the help menu doesn't fill up with certain something until you've come across it. The current help menu does that with the limited things that are in there. But yeah, I, I totally agree with everything that you've said. Uh, so here's a question then, because you're talking about how Diablo learns. We talked a bit about that with our Diablo episode as well. But what do users, what do you think users actually have to know? You know what I mean? So we were laughing at the Arch Nemesis modifiers when we were given a list of what those modifiers do. And it was actually like five modifiers within one modifier. How are you going to know? Some I remember with Diablo you they probably had something quite similar to that but you'd be looking at oh shoot yeah this one's really hard because the clarity was there and there wasn't like a, an onslaught of monsters it was easy to remember as you progress through the campaign and through the end game that there were certain mods that just were a lot scarier than others for your build because there's 80 whether it become goes down to 20 whether it stays at 80 goes to 150 whatever it is do you like the current setup of description? Like now, granted, there's a lot of in, uh, inconsistency with having gargantuan, steel infused, and then all of a sudden there's, I don't know, let's say it's an essence monster or an Einhart beast where they have a different type of description based on the, you know, the type of monster they are or the type of essence they are. And then there's a whole bunch of white text. So throw out that extra stuff. But just with the art, because I think everything needs to be like one or the other. Do you think that the way that Arch Nemesis modifiers are titled versus what they do, do you like that? I think it's clever that they came up with ideas for them, but I think it should not be five lines of text. I mean, to be to complete the to, to be completely honest, but it would be an awful change for them. It should be. I, I'm thinking like the name should literally be what they do, but but that would be kind of hope. But that would be more Diablo three where the name of it is very very obvious to what you're fighting or what they do right. uh i think having five lines of of modifiers for a single arch nemesis modifier is nonsense but i've said that since we found out about it uh i would rather see it so that when i know when i see it i know it but i will say the more you play too i like i don't think it has to be so dummy proof that it's always super obvious because in any game you kind of learn things as you go. And that's another thing with if you had scaling arch nemesis modifiers, you would learn them progressively and not in such a detrimental way that would make you go like, screw this, I do not want to play this game. I would learn if Frostweaver maybe only did one or two things, it would maybe give me a chance to at least learn it as I'm leveling and going through the acts as to what it is. But again, not in a way that just kicks my ass and I'm like, well, can't kill this thing. Uh, then it wouldn't be so bad, but I don't think it should be five modifiers that you have to go online to find out. I think you should be able to look at it and whatever it's called combined with whatever you see it doing should be. It makes it. sense, right? It totally makes sense. There's not a question of what else it could be doing. Right. To me, I think part of the issue 
with knowing what these things do. Like I was using the Frost's modifier titles as an example. Like I, I don't know the difference between them. Uh, if when I look at something that has like Gargantua and then like I picture something big, but to me that doesn't make sense in the game because there's big doesn't matter. Like character size and enemy size is irrelevant in the game. So I don't know what big would do. But something like Juggernaut, I'm like, okay, that's a that's a tanky, beefy character. But now they're steel infused. And I'm like, okay, that's a tanky, beefy character. And then there's a couple other ones that are just the same. And so there's a lot of, to me, as a user that doesn't know the hidden modifiers between those, they're redundant. I know some, I know they're different, but to me, they're redundant because in my head, like you were saying, the simplified version of how that quickly translates in my head, that that they, they mean the same thing. You know, like Arcane, for example, to me, that's somebody that does spells. That's somebody that's like offensive and watch out, there's some crazy spells. I don't remember what it means, but I don't think it means that. So I, I agree Obviously, with you. Obviously, Tyler, it stuns you when you get rid of its energy shield. <laughs> that's exactly right. I forgot. Oh, when it gets rid of its energy shield. When you destroy its energy shield, it stuns. Can it stun you if you're stun proof? No. No, no, it still it still respects the the rules of your build, like with regards to that. But that's not great when you're leveling a new character or no. even like into white maps. You're yeah. usually probably struggling with that stuff. But I think I think my preferred way would be the way that you have mentioned before and today is like a one two word version of what the modifier is. If it says like I don't know, um, physical physical mitigation. Like, and, and, you know, have it color coded kind of like how they do it now too, which is a big help compared to before. Okay, sweet. So I'm a physical build. Oh, dang, this is going to take a long time or, you know, but have those mods. Like to me, it's okay. Instead of having five mods within a mod, it's okay to have those. Like if you went back to letting rares have five mods, but they were the individual mods, not the five hidden ones. Now you have 25. That'd be great. Like, I don't like life regen, but for some reason, it's the only thing coming into my head. So if you have maximum life in red, and then if you have leeches, and then if you have life regen, then you're like, oh, crap, I got to stay away from this thing. I can't, you know, like it, but you would know right away. Yep. Which, I mean, it's, it's funny because that goes to what we talked about with DK, and she said that the, the arch nemesis in the end, if they go that route, didn't solve anything. It did. It, it They would be sort of reverting back to exactly what it was before maybe color coded is just fine though maybe we're fine with just color coded maybe they don't have to be creative with their names for arch nemesis like yeah. for me i'm fine if you like what you said if i saw life regen in red and i don't know you know make it look pretty if you want but yeah. just make it very obvious what i'm fighting and i don't think it should ever ever not scale i think that's just i think making sure. acts one through ten worse is just one of the dumbest Please don't waste any of your people's energy on that. I would much rather them work on end game and league content. Yeah. Well, it, honestly, even if Arch Nemesis stays the same, it still didn't fix anything. According I to them, they were trying have to, to be fix some Arch Nemesis changes, though. This league, I'll be shocked if three nineteen doesn't come up with any Arch Nemesis changes. D design changes, though, not like modifier tweaks. No, I don't like, okay, see this one's doing a little bit less now, damage. This one has less. You're right. Like, no, we're not talking that. <laughs> yeah. We're talking like design something changes. serious i hope mm -hmm. hopefully it, it my my overall assessment is that i i love the idea that they came in with but uh it's it's not good for casual players like you have to know the game really well to do the very basics like it's not like you can anyway no no, no i've i've repeated this in many of the other it's episodes. obviously too a plan for them for poe too which is why to me it needs to be fleshed out a little bit and maybe it sure. won't be in 319 but to me it's crazy if it's not before a short period of time fleshed out a little bit because it isn't good and that's com i am no. completely melting the end game and i can crush maps but i don't but that's because I'm, I'm at the point where i don't really have to care about the arch nemesis modifier anymore which then what was the point of them anyway All right you know like i don't know what the balance is but i just i don't like where it's at for anything up until that point i think once you get a character strong enough you should be able to do whatever you want the process of getting to that point is not enjoyable, though. No, it's not. And you have to know the game really well. Totally. To do the mm -hmm. basics. But that's, there's, you have to consider casual players. Like, there has to be that fine balance of, 
A I casual have... player needs to be capable of knowing what they need to improve to get better. Like if you're stuck, you need to know why you're stuck. I do agree with you, but I think one of the difficulties with this game too is sometimes people, uh, you know, like for yourself, you want to create your own build, which is great. But I think sometimes that with the game shifting as much as it does and Arch Nemesis being such a big change, I still think casual players can quite enjoy the league, but they're probably not going to feel like they had too much input into their character. They're probably going to feel much more like they followed guide, which I still think is great. I really do. I, st I think that's such a good way to learn the game. I think it's a much harder version of the game currently to try and put something new together in its current state. I think it's very sure. difficult to come up with something that's not relatively played a lot. I understand. But for mm -hmm. me, for example, I have two failed builds this league. I know why they failed, but I've played for five, six, seven, whatever years, right? Sure. How do you pick up the game and know what's destroying you and how to get better? I think if you had scaled Arch Nemesis mods, it would make it a little bit better because I, I really do think it would give you the chance to learn it. I don't think you get a good enough chance to learn it through Act 1 and 10 because most of the time, at least for me and my my leveling at the beginning, it was either trying to run past something because I couldn't kill it or I killed it and I never actually learned anything from it. So I think there's got to yep. be some way that they can find a balance to what they are or... If you dropped it down to like 20 modifiers and you scaled when they showed up, you could also have in your, your tutorial something like shaper-esque where as you're coming across the first mob with that modifier you get that game freeze for a second and they take like half a second to just show you this is what gargantuan is and this is what they do mm -hmm. and then the game just continues on and you now know when they've got that modifier this is what it is and if you only have you can't do that with 80 right but you could if there were only 20 and it progressed as you went through the acts i just think there's better ways they could introduce arch nemesis to a player to understand what it's doing Versus just shit on me in Act 1 and be like, ah, wasn't that fun, guys? Pretty yeah, cool. That's right. If you like this, there's yeah. way more waiting for you. That's right. Exactly. So anyway, I, I'm hopeful that 319 will see some changes to it. But I I'm never know. very excited for 319. Despite my unenjoyment of 318, I am very, very excited for 319. And we, despite the fact that we've had things that we haven't enjoyed about certain aspects of whatever league or mechanic in the past, GG does a fantastic job at hearing feedback and thinking about the future. And a lot of the times, the changes that they make for something that they want to change, they don't do right away. They wait for a certain point. Like, look at the flask changes that happened a few leagues ago. They were waiting on that for leagues and leagues, waiting for the right time. So yep. if, if, if they did want to make changes to the current system and it doesn't happen in 319, it's easy to trust that they actually, like Chris has laughed about many times, they do care about their game. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and when everything's revolving around PoE 2's release, you know they're not going to jump. The sh they're just not going to like have PoE 1 in its worst possible state before PoE 2 comes out. So yep. it'll be good. Mm -hmm. I'm excited for our private league, which is starting tomorrow. So yeah, uh, yeah it's going to be fun. Uh, we're going to wrap this up, though. Episode 143, Forever Exile, the Path of Exile podcast. I'm Justin AK Tags. Tyler Recker of Days. We will catch, hopefully, most of you in the AEA private league. If you're, again, want to join it, hop onto our Discord. The link is in announcements, and it will run for 10 days starting on July 1st at 10 a.m. PST. Patrons, we will catch you guys in After Dark, which we're going to record after we've started the private league, so we can have some juicy stuff and maybe deaths to talk about. Everybody else will catch you next week in episode 144. Uh, yeah, we got a website down below, foreverxl.com. We're on Twitter, foreverxl82. We have a Discord, which is a ton of fun. Make sure you join it. And uh, all of our Patreon and other ways to support the podcast are down below. Bye. Bye. Oh, uh, Just, you know what I haven't done in forever for you? Tell me. It has a really cool sound wave. I hate you. <laughs>